What is up everyone? I hope you're all doing well. Blizzard sent me an email recently trying to sell me some of their store mounts. And that just ticked all my boxes. So it's time for me to get a little bit passionate about really? World of Warcraft's most wow. casino shit Flatter. show excuse of an expansion and the terrible there we go. state of the game that is cosmetics of Mountcraft. BFA was shit at launch and 8.1 okay. has done nothing, absolutely nothing, to address the core problems with cosmetics the game. Cosmetics aren't bad, and instead though. of content, what does Blizzard give the players? Another fucking store mount with a unique <laughs> model that they clearly spent some time on. I personally think yes. the mount looks ridiculous and not at all like it belongs in World of Warcraft, more like something they kidnapped from some Japanese anime. The people that buy these fucking mounts are the ones who give Blizzard okay. an excuse to time and time again bend the player base over a barrel and <laughs> fuck them in the ass with the schlong of microtransactions. There it is, The dude. Battle for Dasara lore releases on the 22nd of January, oh, which good very conveniently is just over a month after the release of 8.1. Just to ensure that if someone was- Yo, I think this guy's been watching my streams. Stupid enough to resubscribe for 8.1, Blizzard could get an extra month out of them before they release the raid. Blizzard yeah. needs some tough love. The essence of the problems the game has Woo! is the core philosophy behind how the game is being designed. Blizzard has obviously evolved as a company along with the rest of the gaming industry since they initially released World of Warcraft, and while no one can really blame evolved. them for that, the philosophy behind World of Warcraft also clearly changed. Blizzard Obviously. has of course been heading down this path for a while, and I am under no illusions that they will keep going in this direction until they have run the game into the fucking ground. And that's what bothers me, dude. Is like, I, I feel like, it's like with, with Mr. Pandaria, I was like, ah, you know, Blizzard, I mean, hey, they did the panda thing, it was kind of dumb, but, I mean, they're probably not going to do that again. And then they bring out what? It's like, awesome. They're going to have orcs again. It's going to be just like Burning Crusade. And it's like, where are the orcs? Where's the, the Tannen jungle? Where's anything? Right? And, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know what, man? Like, they just, they didn't have it right. And so we got Legion. And, like, Legion had a lot of content. It was not that bad. But it had a, bad, a lot of bad systems. So you basically take the bad systems from Legion... And then you combine it with the bad content of WAD and you get BFA, right? And, and like the bad, uh, I guess like class gameplay, I think is the worst thing in, in BFA right now, personally. And it's like, there are only so many expansions. It's like, you know, whenever your dog runs away and you check the pound like every day and it's like, where's Spook? Spook's not here. You check the next day, where's Spook? Spook's not here. You check a couple of days later, where's Spook? Spook's still not here. Check a week later. Spook's still not there. And then it's like, man, I don't think Spook's coming home. And, and, and like, that's the way that I feel about the game. It's it just... I, I don't know if Spook's ever going to come home, man. What the fuck? People seem to think that Cataclysm was the start of WoW's downfall, but when Wrath. looking at the mindset that is killing WoW, it really came into play in Wrath of the Lich King, this guy is especially smart. the second half of it. I That's, wonder what really could smart. have happened in the summer of 2008, some months before the release of Wrath, that would make Blizzard completely change their philosophy for the game. Hmm. Oh boy. The moment they started angling the game towards accessibility, people left. At the launch of Wrath, which was notorious oh for having boy. easy dungeons and raids in the beginning because <laughs> accessibility, you can see the subscription numbers flatlining until the later part of the expansion when old Dwar You know what happens when everything's flatlines? They're fucking dead. Luckily it flatlined at 10 million. That's good, but People, here's why it flatlined is because people are like, oh, okay, I'm going to get up to level 80 and play the game and see what it happens. You get all the knacks and we're done with it. Now what? Oh, okay. And that's it. That, 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 I mean, it just finished the game. Like, I don't think Nax is bad. Like, the end of, uh, of Wrath was fucking great because you had a lot of raids to do. Wrath was really good in a lot of ways, but... Man, like, Burning Crusade was just like, anybody thinks Wrath is better than Burning Crusade? Like, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know what to say. Like, because it wasn't at all. Like, Burning Crusade was the best expansion. Like, it, it, in a way, I did this comparison before. I'm not going to get into it too much. But, like, Dark Souls 1 was, like, Vanilla WoW. Dark Souls 3 was Burning Crusade. And I don't know about Dark Souls 2. I haven't played that yet. But it, it's like Wrath of the Lich King. It's like, 
I'd say Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade were like even, basically, right? I mean, like uh, for me personally, I like Vanilla more because I, I have like a different uh, different priorities as like an MMO player than you know like just like high end content, right? But like Wrath, like was just so far below that. It was just embarrassing. The only reason people liked Wrath is it had the Lich King and had like raids that were accessible in that. Like that, that's good. But as you can see, it didn't save the game. It didn't keep people playing the game. War and ICC was released and Cataclysm was announced. The game basically cut out its own content by introducing features like LFD and Wrath and LFR and Cata, talk about shooting yourself in the goddamn foot blizzard. That's exactly making right. Making the game accessible doesn't work. Sounds good, doesn't work. Because making the game accessible sacrifices the feeling of exclusivity, and exclusivity breeds desire. The game has adapted to the players instead of making the players adapt to the game. Blizzard isn't making the players achieve or holding them to a standard. Instead, they let the players decide their own standard, which of course isn't very high, as people will always take the path of least resistance. And here we have one of the obvious mistakes Blizzard is making, which is okay. appealing to the people in the community that want everything for no investment. They're appealing to people that don't like the game. It's like, imagine if you went to IHOP and you wanted a hamburger. And IHOP sells pancakes, but you want a hamburger. So IHOP then changes its name and does all of these different things to make the hamburger people happy. And in the process of doing this, people think it's so fucking stupid that the account for IHOP got taken over by a rogue uh, a, a rogue idiot on the internet because it's so fucking ridiculous. Here's the problem. Y you appeal to your audience. Like, you don't try to appeal to people that don't watch your content. It's like, if they don't, if, if somebody likes playing FPS games, they're probably not going to like WoW, or the, the chances of them liking WoW is going to be lower than if somebody likes just, like, other RPGs. They, they try to appeal to so many people that they end up appealing to nobody. You can't not have a target audience as this is earning them nothing. These are not the type of players to invest themselves in anything anyways. These are- Here's another example. Good idea. Who is that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you VIP in chat if you're a sub. Okay, you're not. Um, or, or Draxus, I'll read your name. That's, uh, that's what you get. All right, so there's a, a video of a woman ordering fries at Taco Bell. There's not a video about it. I, I, I did it myself. Okay, you know what the fries at Taco Bell are like? It's like a soggy dog dick that you dip in cheese and the cheese sucks taco bell's a good example taco bell they tried to step outside the mold just make bastardized mexican food don't try to make fries don't try to make hamburgers just make bastardized mexican food that offends people that are actually hispanic and have heritage and you know they hate it but that's what they're supposed to do. That's what they, that, that's their, that's, that's Taco Bell. And they try to appeal to the new audience with these fucking fries and they're disgusting. Like it almost makes me want to throw up thinking about them. Like just the color is weird. It's just like, I mean, the fries in Taco Bell are a perfect example of what I'm talking about the players that will baby rage and check out the moment they don't get what they want just by fucking pointing at it and will go trying to wind their way through some other game instead when That's these right. are the people you are tailoring the rewards of the game around no wonder you are having problems retaining players they are absolute children and should be treated as such by blizzard and by the community as a whole the problem is that they're not it's actually a 32 year old dad that's used to talking down to his three-year-old daughter and he can't actually rationalize anything that he thinks because he's used to arguing with literally children. And they're, they're these, they're 35 year old boomers that are trying to tell everybody else how to play their fucking game. 
is it no i'm serious like and i'm 28 i'm getting up there and i swear to fucking god guys kill me if i ever start talking like this because it's fucking ridiculous people should allow the game to proceed in its own fucking ma fashion like allow yourself to fade out into the sunset and quit the game with fucking respect quit the game with some form of honor and maybe that's too that's too hyperbolic of a word that's too strong of a word but just fade out into the sunset and let someone else take your place rather than expecting blizzard to keep your sub on life support with these catch-up mechanisms that kill the fucking game like that that that's how i feel I know a popular line is that because you paid for the game, you should somehow have access to all of the content. Really? Are you serious? That is the stupidest shit I ever- That's not even stupid to be like, but- But that's the same argument, like, no, here's the- here's what- here's what he's meaning to say. What somebody says, well, I paid for the game so I should have access to the content, is what people should say whenever Xandalari trolls still aren't in the fucking game. Not whenever they're too fucking lazy to get into a raid. Right idea, wrong implementation. Heard, you do not buy a single player game to go straight to fighting the end boss and finishing the story, do you? So why the hell would you expect all the content from World of Warcraft without investing the time? You are paying for the journey, not to go to the destination. You are paying for a chance to progress through the content, not to complete it. If the game is too demanding for you, then go play something else. This is the whole point Blizzard is fucking up. The game should be about the journey. That's the meat of the game right there. Content no. should be tiered, and not all the content should be for all the players. Rating should be for the best and most dedicated PvEers, Heroic Dungeons a step below that, Normal Dungeons below that again, and then at the bottom you have PvP. Wow. Like I said, keeping some content exclusive wow. based on investment into the game creates an incentive and a drive to invest time and effort into improving so that you can eventually qualify to do that more exclusive content. Yeah, Instead, you move up over Blizzard time. gives players access to all the different endgame content without demanding any investment in return and then throw shit like the six month subscription mount at them before they realize how fucking devoid of substance the game is and leave! Some of the players themselves are just as big a part of the problem here in my opinion. Instead. That's true. That actually, that is true. What the fuck? I, I never really thought of that. Because they brought out the six month thing whenever people are still fleshing out BFA to know, like, if it's good or not. And people, you know, on, like, the new expansion high were like, oh, man, I'm having so much fun. I guess I'll just get the six month thing because the, the, the good times are going to keep rolling. Man. Uh, yeah, wow. Instead of realizing what I've just fucking explained, they instead cry for more easy content that can't be too time consuming because they have a job, you know, and then therefore Blizzard can't really make content that feels gratifying in the long run since some players want a medal for absolutely anything they do in the game. And then afterwards, the community sits there and wonder why the game feels unrewarding and boring and why players are leaving the game in droves. And the way to keep the casual players invested and interested in the game is not by making the higher end content like Mythic and Mythic Plus Dungeons, Raids, or even Heroics accessible there by it is. pulling the requirements for those types of content down to a casual level. It's instead to make the content that has now become trivial actually matter. Keep raiding and heroic and mythic dungeons for the more hardcore and wow. invested players. You can't have it all. So a compromise would be to make content like leveling, gold making, normal dungeons, reputations, dailies, etc. viable for progressing your character. This would still make the casual players, at least the unentitled ones, get something out of the game. Without sacrificing higher level content like raiding and heroic dungeons on the altar of accessibility. This change in... The funny thing about this is that it's actually something that I've thought of a lot. And the the problem, it's like my mom. I use my mom as probably an example for a lot of things I talk about in WoW because she plays WoW and she plays as a super casual. She never raids or does anything. 
she had a better experience in Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade than she does now, even though there are all the accessibility features that there are now, because taking part and participating in those features doesn't give you any sort of lasting benefit or reward. It doesn't matter. But for her, back in the day, whenever she was able to fish or farm gold or do something like that or do her professions, there was an end goal that was worth working towards. And I, I think that's really what's missing. Um, the, the weird thing about it to me is that the game in its previous state was actually more accessible and more rewarding for casual players than it is now. And I think it's a very good example of the you think you do, but you don't. Like, I don't think that's always wrong. The players don't know really what they want, especially low-level players that just play the game on a very disconnected level, right? They don't understand it thoroughly. And, I mean, there it is. Imagine actually doing professions. Well, no, I mean, see, that's the thing is you probably, like, maybe you don't even play WoW, right? But, like, back in the day, everybody did professions. That was what you fucking worked on whenever you were playing solo. Professions and gold making were solo content. Philosophy for the game is very, very evident. There used to be server communities. You had a name that mattered and that you had to build for yourself. You had to evolve and become good as a player to achieve. People yep. might exclaim that, oh no, that's too much like real life and I'm playing this game because I want a break from real life. No, you don't. Humans are programmed to find satisfaction from being socially, professionally, financially successful, etc. You want to be well-liked socially. You want to have a good reputation. You want to be fit and muscular. You want to be good at your job because in real life, garnering these traits would get you a nice car, a promotion, a hot girlfriend, a nice house, and a big bank account balance. But this obviously requires that you put in the work for it, like becoming pleasant, funny, and charismatic, like working out to build muscle, working a lot to become good at your job, taking care of and maintaining your- I really like this guy, because he doesn't talk around the point. I love this. Like, I hate it whenever people, they, they talk around it, but they don't say it. This guy just, he literally just fucking opens up and just deep dicks it. Yeah, I, I, I like this a lot. Reputations, etc. All of these require consistent effort I got over you more push time. Over time. In World of Warcraft, you want to be well-liked by the people you play with, or by your guild. You want a good reputation on the server. You want to be good at your class, and you want to be knowledgeable about the game. Because this will get you invited to raids or dungeons. And instead of a car, it will get you a title. Instead of a girlfriend, it'll get you a nice mount. Instead of a promotion, oh, it will get you a spot on a raid team. Repeat yourself. And just like you would work out to build muscle, you would put in effort in the game to earn better gear. Video games takes the same psychology, which direct humans in real life and imitates it in a video game it gives you it's exactly what i've been saying this is exactly what i've been saying for like over 10 years is that wow back in the day like wow gave me like it gave me an even playing field right where like i was on the same playing field that i that like my teachers and like adults were on whenever i was a kid and i beat their fucking ass and that made me feel good because i could actually do something that was my own and like like that that second world that like you know you, you don't have the same issues that you do in real life where you know somebody who's taller or more attractive or comes from a more well-off family or anything like that or you know it's just like physically stronger than you is able to beat you it, it's just purely your ability and your motivation to succeed that takes you farther and being able to be in an environment like that is really compelling for a lot of people because it's what they want real life to be. People don't want to have to think about, oh, well, this person got the job over me because their brother works there and, you know, it's nepotism. That That's obviously going to make people feel bad. Uh, th these types of things really do matter, I, I would say. And having a world that you can be part of, that you can achieve things in, and those things are your own, I, I think really matters a lot. And the fact that it mirrored real life in that way was really what made it successful and i would argue i would argue that until until the end of time and the weird thing about it is you have people nowadays who think the opposite which which is really surprising to me rewards for investing time into it it dresses it up but that is the essence of it the game's 
simply give players a sense of accomplishment, just like doing well in real life would, only at a different scale, obviously. And the better the game is at imitating this feeling of accomplishment found in the real world, the better the games will do at keeping people invested. And with investment comes dedication, and dedication, in turn, encourages continued investment. It's a circle. A circle! Triangle has like a corner, and the end, this one. It's a circle. Blizzard has basically become the type of people who want to give all the kids who play in a football tournament a trophy just for participating, and then wonder why no one wants to play football. Fun fact, you know what the kids do with those trophies? They throw- There's what they used to, what they do now. Some people told me about this. They would play basketball and PE in, in, in gym class, and they weren't allowed to keep score because that would make certain people feel like they were losers. Can you fucking believe it? You can't keep score. Like if you keep score, you're gonna get you're you're gonna get in trouble. It's it's pathetic, absolutely fucking pathetic. Uh, I I just, you know what we used to do whenever we play basketball. I would get dunked on by my friend Lowell, but he had a basketball court up at his house, and we play it at school too, and I would talk shit to people all day about it because we won and they lost and i hate basketball but at least i had fun with it because i could win sometimes it was great dude yeah the, and like this is the same thing with wow it's like how many times have you heard people saying that they should disable damage meters because some shitter doesn't want to feel bad that he's 17th on dps and it's a 10-man raid them away because they hold no value for them because they know they got the trophy for doing something completely trivial and unimpressive now isn't that a striking parallel the game currently seems pulled in two directions the casual side which is clearly what the quick to complete undemanding content is aimed at and then the trying to make it an esports side which is what the rating and the mythic plus is aimed at this makes the game very top and bottom heavy with nothing in the middle and it doesn't help that the content at the top and bottom is the most soulless minimum effort piece of shit since no man's sky or pre it's actually kind of funny whenever you think about that right is you've got the very very low end content which is basically doing lfr and being afk and then you have the very 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 high end content which is being an island expeditions and also coincidentally being afk think about it it's the same thing Pretty much all of the Assassin's Creed's made in the past eight years. Requiesca and Pache, am I right? Blizzard's attitude towards rewards is completely wrong. During Legion, there was 121 mounts available to obtain. 121 mounts in a two-year expansion. BFA launched with 42 mounts, and patch 8.1 alone brings 20 plus <sighs> oh mounts to the God, game, dude. but not a fucking iota of actual content. What the fuck? So many mounts in the game the are ridiculously over the top, and half of them also look so out of place and not at all like they belong in the Warcraft universe. Mounts themselves as a reward is not a bad thing, and a lot of them look great, and you have to credit the art team for their work. True. But you cannot make the entire reward structure about mounts and cosmetics. They're way too shallow for that. And like with <laughs> anything else, overexposure will diminish the value of them. People oh, he's right, though. I mean, he's right. It is like mounts and shit. They get people to play the game, but like because it's a cosmetic reward. Here, 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 here's like here's 200 IQ, right? Is that cosmetic rewards only have value to people who are invested in the game? Because if you're not invested in the game, you don't care how your character looks. So, the problem isn't necessarily that the mount rewards are not there. The problem is that there is no reason for players to ascend to the level that they care about what mount their character is riding. It's because people don't get to that point. They don't care. Mounts are great incentives. Like, I, I, I've seen more guilds break up because of mounts than anything else. Because people fucking love mounts. Like, that, that's the one thing that you have that 
everybody can fucking see. That's just you? No, man. It's it's other people, too. Like, getting people invested enough in a game. Like, Fortnite. Here's an example, right? I haven't bought 55 or or $1,000 worth of V-Bucks on Fortnite because I don't give a fuck what my character looks like. The only thing that annoys me is sometimes it makes me a girl, right? Because I don't have a skin. I don't really give a fuck. But if I cared a lot more about the game, right, I, I would buy skins for the game. And so... The game has to make you care in order for you to care about cosmetics. It's basically like what came first. Well, not really what came first, the chicken or the egg. It's like what... Well, okay. So, like, all right. Basically, you have the chicken and then the egg, right? It doesn't matter which one comes first. But after that, you have an egg sandwich. Now, regardless of making the egg sandwich, you have to have either the chicken or the egg. So you have to have that before you get to the egg sandwich. You don't just invent an egg sandwich out of nowhere. Think about it. Stop finding them special. Blizzard has to make the game about prestige again, not specifically the gear or the appearances, even though that will surely be part of it, but of about course. the prestige behind succeeding in the game. Make it desirable to earn a piece of gear, not for the stats or for the appearance, even though, like I said, that is also a factor, but for the prestige of having acquired that piece of yes. gear. The feeling of reward comes from within each individual player, and it cannot be forced by throwing meaningless rewards like mounts or transmogs at them. Blizzard needs to go deeper. I'm not saying the rewards have to change back to the way it was in vanilla BC, etc., even though that would be a great start. I yes, think the philosophy of how to be. reward players needs to change back to what it was in the early days of WoW. Blizzard has every opportunity to innovate and come up with some new systems for rewards in the game. And that, combined with taking on the early design and reward philosophies for the game, is the solution to Blizzard's little player attention problem. It's not really hard to see where Blizzard is putting their effort in creating rewards. Blizzard has started putting an emphasis on rewards like mounts, pets, or cosmetics in general to compensate for the fact that the game lacks any and all feeling of accomplishment. So instead of having demanding, time-consuming content, which gave you a sense of accomplishment, you now have transmog and mounts. This is why I think a lot of people who play... It's kind of like if you go to the trophy store and you, you you have them make a trophy and it says first place Super Bowl winner, Billy Bob, that's your name, Billy Bob. And you put it up there, you're not going to feel as good as if you actually won the Super Bowl. They're basically giving people trophies that say you're a winner whenever they're not winning. Like, I, I mean, there it is. Analogy Andy. It works. Like, yeah, you're, you're right. I, the analogies, because, like, I, I do the analogies because they work. Uh, it, it makes sense. Because, like, obviously, like, it, it's a different frame of thinking. Uh, yeah, the, the fucking analogy. Yeah, th there it is, man. Like, uh, who is this guy? He deserves some subs. I I'll link the video at the end. But, like, the point that I'm making is, like, they're, like... They're adding in rewards to, like, kind of compensate for the fact that they don't have these systems that made the game so fundamentally fun. And now we're just stuck with this, like, this thing where we're just getting, like, mounts and, like, titles and, like, transmogs and stuff. I, I like mounts, titles, transmogs, and everything like that. I really like cosmetics. But I I'm also, like, I'm a very, very dedicated player. Like, for an average player, most people don't care about that kind of stuff. The game back in the day, like moi, don't really consider cosmetics or mounts worthwhile rewards. And let's be real, World of Warcraft is no longer an RPG, it is a fucking collection game. I think this explains why the game feels so shallow and not at all worth it. And not just for me. Every single person that I consider a friend that has played World of Warcraft at some point has quit the game. Some started in Vanilla, some started in BC, some in Wrath, some in Kata, and even some in Mr. Pandaria. They all have the same issues with the game. It's shallow, it's stale, it's just cosmetics, it's unrewarding, there's no community, etc, etc. I you think about this and it's fucking true. Like, uh, I'll turn this off. I, I, I know some people are probably getting annoyed that I'm pausing the video a lot. Uh, that, that's too bad. 
like we now have five tabs of collections that we're going through here and th this is that's a lot to collect and, and then you've also got like meta collection stuff which is like titles and you know different little items like this and, and i'm not even saying this is a bad thing uh, i think the collection meta can exist simultaneously with the game actually just being rewarding for basic players and and, and that's basically my concern that's all you do well, yeah, that's because it's the only thing that's worth doing. That's the whole conversation that he's talking about, is the fact that that's the only thing that's worth doing. I exactly. Like, yeah, do you think I would do this in, like, Vanilla WoW? Like, yeah, maybe a little bit. I'd want to get, like, the Zulian Tiger or something, but I'd want to have good gear. Like, I, I would want to have my character be really powerful. That's what would be awesome. For, for this, I don't really care. A and... That's a huge difference. Can go on for fucking ever. And these are the people that loved the game and that would pull all nighters with me on the weekends to play World of Warcraft back in the day. Yep. They have all completely lost interest. And the story, oh my god, this story. I don't know if I even want to think about it. Seeing what has become of the World of Warcraft story breaks my fucking heart. It's absolute trash. I mean, like, wow. The Last Jedi trash. It's a fucking tragedy. And what happened to great timeless Jedi. stories like Illidan and Arthas? And I don't think Blizzard needs to rehash old stories to make WoW good, but we go from Arthas to fucking spaceships and time travel? The story now consists of scripted story quests and cinematics or cutscenes that give you all the story right there. Again, yeah. demanding nothing from the players. See a theme here? Because I fucking do. There is I, the reason we don't have characters like Arthas and Illidan anymore is because Arthas and Illidan took 10 years to develop. What character are they developing now that will be the boss in 10 years? Like, or like some, some very important character, like maybe like Cadgar or like Garrosh was a really good example. Anduin, Sarfang, you know, these characters, they Blizzard, they're, they're killing off too many characters, right? And I think they did this too early in the game. Um, I really do feel like they should have focused or they should focus now on developing new characters so much more than they are now. Zappy Boy is a very good start. Hopefully they will continue that. It's a line in cinema. Show, don't tell. Make the audience draw their own conclusions. You used to have to read quests. Think Dark and yes, Souls. you had some cutscenes here and there, but they were mostly yeah. aimed at the climax of the story, not the building of it. The rest, the players had to piece together from doing the content. Remember that? Content? The story is straight up lazy and uninspired. The game, and more specifically, the expansion needs a villain. A full-on villain from start to stop with an entire story behind them that the players can explore and learn during the expansion. Someone the players can invest themselves in fighting. Like in Arthas, or at least important Illidan. Arthas was the best done villain of the game. Yes, it's a cliche story, but he had personality and character. He had a huge backstory. Instead, we get the Shaw, Gul'dan, and the Burning Legion all. Oh. I don't think the Burning Legion, like, I, 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 like, Ashara's there? Well, no, who is Ashara? Who gives a fuck? Like, I mean, really, like, Ashara should be much more compelling and interesting than she is now. The Shah, yeah, the Shah was the worst end boss of ever, right? If I wanted to fight against uh, the Shah of Fear, I'd go to fucking therapy. I don't want to go to a raid and fight against my emotions. It's annoying. The only emotion that I had on that boss was the Shah of Boredom. It was fucking awful. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed by it. But the fact is that the, like, I mean, I, I thought Kill Jaden was a great boss. He was a, a great character. The problem is that Kill Jaden, it's like island expeditions. Island expeditions have an immense amount of potential and the potential that they're being used for is like 10% of it. Like Kill Jaden could have been an incredible character. I mean, but they did all of the character development in literally the last 30 seconds that he was alive. Think about that. fucking over again i am so fucking done with demons at this point i swear i have demon fatigue the magic of the game was that you were a nobody you were nothing when you started you are nothing and you worked your way up to becoming a champion of the horde or of the alliance that oh, was pretty much it now you are the savior of all things the chosen one the speaker the of the high lord the one saving the world 
again. That shit gets really tiresome. Games have told that story for decades. World of Warcraft used to not put you up as the one and only. You were one of many, scrambling together to defeat the bad guys. Blizzard is now handing out gear as if they had gear Tourette's and have completely devalued gear as a reward. You know, In actually, Manila, raid let me ask you guys, a I, I want to do something, okay? Because uh, I think what you're saying is true. Um, uh, straw, where's straw poll? Um, it's a second here, straw poll, and type your question. Uh, let's see. Which would you prefer? Um, one big boss, open-ended story. And I'm actually curious to hear what people's, uh, people's answer is this is, right? Open-ended story is kind of like Vanilla WoW in a way, and one big boss is like Arthas. Just a second. Open it. Yeah, yeah. G give me a, give me a straw poll. I need to use the bathroom. I I'm actually curious about this. Not the answer I expected, actually. Uh, I, I thought a lot more people would say that they preferred an open-ended story. But um, for me personally, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think both of them are good, but it's really hard for me to say what, which I like more. We lied? Well, I, I, I don't know. Like, th the point is that I, I do kind of, I don't know. I, I think both of them are kind of good. But yeah, I, th I guess one big boss is like easier for people to understand, though. So yeah, that, that's actually good for me to know. Bosses dropped two to three pieces of gear for 40 people. That gear was special. It was a hell of a reward. Epic gear was epic. Getting gear was a big deal instead of getting bukkakied on with gear in retail. The gear itself has also become so streamlined. Okay. Gear no longer has any unique traits like chance on hit or specific class related abilities. They even removed tier sets for God's sakes. Can you name any regular piece of gear you have in the stats it features and how you got it? They have turned gearing into Actually, a soulless no. slot machine that gives you nothing memorable or unique. Gear is now just your item level, nothing less, nothing more. I mean, one of the main ways of receiving gear, the mythic caches and PvP caches, are basically loot boxes that give you a completely random piece of gear regardless Except of whether you, you need it time. or want it. Players don't have yeah. to improve their skill level at all to access content. And even for higher content, they can get into it as long as... That was a really good point. And I, I want to I go ahead and, and emphasize on that. Players do not have to improve their skill level to access content. There was one exception to that in Legion. Everybody knows it's the Mage Tower. What a coincidence that the Mage Tower is viewed by most people... Or not, I, I sorry, I can't say most people, but but by a lot of people that I talk to, that I hear from, as one of the most successful bits of content in Legion. I, I mean, there it is. I, I don't think that's a coincidence at all. They have the fucking eye level. They don't have to join a guild. They don't have to prove themselves at all. A player's power is boiled down to a fucking number. You used to be able to map out the gear you wanted or needed for your character or yep. make a bis list. This made players point out their own goals and milestones in the process of gearing up. This gave you smaller wow. goals. This made players. I want to look at that right there. Pre raid best in slot list with enchants on it. Main hand weapon, intellect. 
you would go to different areas and then kill bosses that had a chance to drop a piece of gear that you could use. And you would do that with other people. And that, that's the way that it used to work. I, Yeah, it's crazy. And like you look at like what this content is, right? A lot of these are like leatherworking, uh, I, I, engineering. You've got like profession stuff. You've got dungeons. You've got 10-man dungeons. Uh, I'm sure for some people that are like PvP alternatives, there are all these other options that you have. And like... The content was very varied. It was very varied. Just point out their own goals and milestones in the process of gearing up. This gave you smaller goals you could continuously work towards and achieve. Other goals related to gear could be hitting expertise cap or hit cap. Remember that? I had no idea how much I would miss hit until right now. It wasn't. All right, he's wrong about that. I thought hit cap and expertise were pointless and they just served to overcomplicate the game. I don't think they added anything positive into the game. I think the only argument that you can make for hit cap being interesting is if you're playing a dual wielding character with a innate miss class, uh, miss chance. <clears throat> but I, I, I don't think there was anything good about hit chance or expertise. It was just a needless complication that didn't really affect gameplay. It was like you needed this for your gameplay to work, and I, I just I didn't really think it was good for the game. It wasn't good play. Well, I understand. Yeah, you guys are saying I'm wrong. That That's fine. I thought it was stupid. I, I really have always thought it was dumb. It, it's an RPG element. Well, everything is an RPG. Like, yeah, but... Like... You can say that about so many things that are, like, not really good gameplay features. I, I just don't really feel like the stat of hit rating or expertise added anything to the game that made it more interesting. It was just a frustrating number that you had to meet that was an arbitrary restriction for you to be able to play your class in the way that it was supposed to function. Like, it just wasn't really fun. Like, for, like, a, a dueled in class, like a Fury Warrior or, like, a Rogue, like, yeah, okay, hit cap could be interesting because you'd have, like, dual wielding. But outside of that, I don't think there's a point to it. Straw poll? Well, I, I mean, I, I think that most people would probably vote against me, right? But I still don't think that I'm wrong. I, I don't think that I'm wrong at all. Wasn't terribly exciting to work on your hit cap, but fuck me, did it feel good? Yes, weapon to skills get did make sense. Capped. And just to know that now you would never miss with an ability. That made you feel like you were progressing and becoming more powerful, little by little. Systems now are designed around you just logging in every day. Daily rewards, ass right grind, world quest, dungeons, the goddamn mission table, Ooh, which should be obliterated, and they all feel like a chore. As right traits are boring. I don't think the mission table is innately bad, and I think the state of the mission table right now is completely fine. It serves no purpose in the game whatsoever except to have this irrelevant content that nobody cares about that has no impact on the game. Nobody gives a fuck, right? It's like the, the same, like, I don't think the mission table should be deleted in any different way than I think that pet battles should be deleted. Mission tables have no impact on other bits of content, really, and neither do pet battles. They're just secondary content for different types of people to play. If no one gives a fuck, get rid of it? Well, there's a lot of people that care, right? And it's just something different for people to do. Uh, it's not like, I, I, I hope that Blizzard didn't spend a lot of time developing the mission table and generic and apparently a balancing nightmare the heart of Azeroth is just a plain compulsory grind reputations are all the same and you do them all in the same damn way they don't provide anything of use a few pieces of gear that is fucking true reputations used to be what you would do like I would log on and I would farm rep because that's what I needed to get gear nowadays there's no reason to farm rep because by the time that you get exalted you're already going to outlevel everything that you're able to get, except for, oh, wow, you can buy another horse. And a tabard that you're never going to use.
or that's obsolete within the first two weeks. They do let you qualify for flying, though, which lets you blast through the little content there is to do in the game even faster. And guess what else they give you? 410 points, that's right, more mounts. Every bit of content they've introduced this expansion has been largely hated by the community and for good reason. Warfronts is the most pathetic piece of content I have ever seen make its way into the world of Warcraft. And the ice. You know, now that I think about it, the way that they approach reputations in BFA is the exact same that they approach them in Warlords of Draenor. Like, all of these reputations, like Saber Stalkers, uh, Steam Mineral Preservation Society, Order of the Awakened, Hand of the... No, not Order of the Awakened, that was the wrong one. Shatari Defense, Hand of the Prophet, Council of Exarchs. All of these reputations, all you really needed to do was just run around and randomly kill mobs. And, and that was it, right? I mean, you just did that for a while and you got exalted. That, that was all there was to it. And, and with these, all you would basically do is run around and do world quests. It was the exact same thing. on the cake is that it guarantees you gear and you can't lose by the way have you noticed that the so-called content that is being developed by blizzard is mostly instanced pvp is instanced raiding is instanced dungeons and mythic plus are instanced islands are instanced warfronts are you guessed it instanced now i do not mind the game using instances for some of the content like raids for example but all of it doesn't seem very mmo does it especially not very fitting for a game that calls itself the world of warcraft and not instances of Warcraft. I, that's one of the things I really liked about Black Desert is that everybody was kind of taking part in the game in the same way, right? Like you, you, you didn't go to like some weird instance to fight a boss. You, you would actually just go over to the area where the boss spawned and killed it and, and kill it, right? There weren't instances in the game. Those were that was a very very good and positive feature about Black Desert that I liked a lot. And what does the incredible waste of time that is AFK fronts come with? You guessed it, fucking mounts. Island invasions are ridiculously boring. I have absolutely no goddamn clue how someone at Blizzard decided that, you know, this is a great idea. Wow, brilliant. Islands. Even better, let's make it a pretty much mandatory for people to keep their necklaces up to date. I'm sure the players will love that. You fucking idiot. It comes down to AoE wow. mobs in packs for Azerite. Acerite. That's what it gives you. You know what else it gives you? More fucking mounts. They are intentionally making the game more about you and only you instead of about playing on the dynamics of the community. And they are twisting the game systems inwards towards the player instead of outwards towards the community. Like LFR and LFD before it, which removed having to use the community to find players to do content with, they have made the community aspect of the game utterly obsolete. Another example of this is the master loot change, where they removed master loot and instead implemented personal loot for all aspects of the game. It's like they want players sitting in their own little box, queuing up in some fucking group finder, being part of the community of the server, and the- Well, that way, because I, I think Blizzard, they, they feel like if somebody has a negative experience in the game, they're going to quit. So how do you prevent people from having negative experiences? You just make sure they don't have any experiences. Boom. Because you can't have a negative experience if you can't have experiences. You have to play nice and play fair. And that means that you play by yourself. Because if you have people interacting, there's going to be BM. There's going to be shit talking. There's going to be people getting mad. It's like even in Dark Souls, you kill somebody in PvP and you point at the ground, you do that to talk shit. That's what people do in a competitive environment. It, it's the way it goes. And you have these pussies that are trying to make the game like a fucking, uh, like, like a preschool daycare because nobody can afford to get their fucking feelings hurt. I get pissed off all the time whenever people talk shit to me. I get really fucking mad and I don't want it going away because I want to be able to make them mad whenever I beat them. That's the game. Guild I get that you so played with fucking and mad. building your character with them. That was the game, man. I lost a duel. I broke my flip phone in half. I took that shit. I fucking busted it. I threw it both sides of the fucking room. I don't even know where the other side is now. It's gone. 
I hated that fucking phone. I lost a duel to a hunter in front of Iron Forge. I said, if I lose this shit, I'm going to bust that motherfucker in half. I did. That was the game. The allied races are a neat idea, but again, yeah. they're just cosmetics. They don't do anything unique of significance, uh, just like all the other races in the game at this fucking point. They are just another cosmetic for Blizzard to use as an excuse for real content and real rewards. Races used to, and should have, significant traits that make them differ from each other. How, for example, trolls had extra bow skill back in the day, making them great hunters. Humans used to have greater stealth detection, and increased expertise with dagger and swords, making them great rogues. The races, as well as the classes, need to stand out more. Yep. The classes are too simple. They are no longer unique. The classes all feel the goddamn same. Mana is pretty much trivial, and has no real effect on gameplay besides for healers. The classes no longer have uniquenesses that make them stand out. And everyone has alts now. That should speak to the lack of content in the game. People lack interest and don't feel invested and connected to their main characters, so they make alts in an attempt to fix this. Obviously, it doesn't fix the problem, it only postpones it. Look at Vanilla WoW. Players would get very invested in the one or few characters they had, and it made them garner a sort of pride for their character. Same there as with faction go, pride on PvP realms, as you were tied to making characters on only one faction. And leveling used to actually be part of the game. Now it's all heirlooms and experience boosts. Or guess what? You can simply buy your way to the newest expansion. How are players supposed to feel invested in their character from that? It took me over a month to hit my first max level character when yeah. I started playing. I still have that character. I love that guy. And even though I haven't mained him since Cataclysm, he is still what I consider my main character. Oh, what all my frustration man. comes down to is that I know, like many others, that they can do so much better. So much better. Blizzard themselves know that they can do better. They knew this back in 2005 for fuck's sake. Go watch some of the old design philosophy panels from the early BlizzCons and you'll see what I mean. We also have to give players something to aspire to. There's a lot to be said for that moment when you're sitting in Orgrimmar as a newbie and somebody runs through in like all raid gear and you're like, wow, that guy must be so powerful. Or eBay or something. Um. It's like, imagine that, dude. It's like Jeff is up there preaching elitism while at the same time making a joke about people selling and buying accounts. And then later on, he's talking about kicking somebody who sucks out of the raid. Like, this is the Blizzard that I bought every fucking game from. It didn't matter. If, if, if they made a, a, a game that was like, you know, Dick Riders, I'd buy it. Because it was from Blizzard. That's what I do. And, and it's, it's another age. It is another age. This is back before... This is like... This is back before everybody has to watch everything they fucking say. Because oh, if they say something wrong, somebody's going to get mad on Twitter and... You know, they might lose money. It's just like, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, everybody is too, like, afraid of everything now. It's so frustrating. They're too afraid. I, I hate it. And it's not that they can't. They do not want to, at least not the leadership. I think placing the blame on individual developers is a bit off as they do not really have any say on the direction of the game. But the leadership and heads of development on the other hand, they're fair game. It's very easy to see why World of Warcraft grew so much in the beginning. It was the game's philosophy. And the moment that changed, the game yeah, call started out culture, dying. exactly. But hey. Yeah, I'll look at the Gillette thing. At least we got Gillette classic. thing in, in a bit, okay? People wanted me to see that. Oh.